Hi guys, I'm Daddy Free, he's convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. This is going to be very quick. Um, I just said I should share this with you. The plot thickens. New twist in the saga. More suspects arrested over the super TV boss issue according to the nigerian police force the lagos state police command has arrested more suspects in connection with uh, the passing of the chief executive officer of super tv usifo ataga the lagos state police police commissioner hakim udumosu made this known during a parade of some of the suspects at the command headquarters in ikeja wednesday without giving details we have established a case of conspiracy and we have arrested more suspects ataga whose wife and children reside in abuja was first reported missing by concerned friends and family after efforts to reach him proved abortive later officers of the uh, lagos state police command command found him in a flat in lecky face one with multiple wounds chilima a 300 level student in unilag's department of mass communication later confessed to stabbing him while being paraded at the lagos state police command ikeja on the 24th of june but in a video that went viral on monday the undergraduate denied this a claim contrary to her initial confession. There are many twists to this. Another twist is uh, one second, guys. Now, um, uh, there was a story earlier on. I'm trying to quickly locate it. According to the Vanguard newspaper, there's a story that says, Stop parading Chidima for social media interviews. Reps tell IGP. The House of Representatives on Tuesday asked the Nigerian police force to conduct a proper investigation into the alleged um, issue and refrain from parading the suspected Chidima, parading her around to grant social media interviews on the matter. The House also called on the Inspector General of Police to prevail on all police personnel to ensure that there are no violations of human rights and media access to arrested persons in the future to av avoid compromising the case in a court of law, to avoid uh, subjudicing the case. So, quite a lot has happened with regards to this particular issue. I warned you guys about this public interviews. Yes, yes, everything must be on social media. Um, it takes away the meat from the matter. Today, she done it. Tomorrow, she undone it. So many twists and so many turns. Was she given, was she read her rights? She had the right to remain silent. She had the right to an attorney. Anything she said can and would be used against her. Were those rights read to her? Did she understand them?
So here's my take. We have a lot of work to do as a country, especially with regards to issues of this magnitude and of this nature. Did she get justice from the media? Yes, you see, when, when justice fails, you go to the media. I understand that. I've been in that position before. I've been in a position where I felt I wasn't getting justice and I came to social media. And even if I didn't get so, uh, justice from social media, social media threw a broader light on the issue at hand. In this situation, they went to the media first. Who goes to the media first? What are you expecting to get from the media? What magic are you expecting the media to perform? Then all of a sudden now, more people have been arrested. It's now a conspiracy. We have a lot of work to do in this part of the world. If you see, if the system, if, if you feel that you're being cheated and you run to social media, social media is very useful. But to start the trial on social media before the court of public opinion, I think that's already some judicing at the end of the day. I'm even suspecting at this stage that for all you know, this is just a movie played out, a reality show played out in front of everybody. But then another issue is if this matter was not brought to the media, Our law enforcement too are notorious for doing things anyhow. Now that the matter is in front of the media, it's hard for police or the court or anybody to do anyhow. I understand that. Who remembers Clifford Oji? Who remembers Clifford Oji? Nasoda Matatik died. Clifford Ojiwe, the chop person. I think this was in the 90s. Who remembers the Clifford Oji instance? I want to see hands. Do you remember Clifford Oji? Toyota bus stop. God bless you. How do we know Clifford Oji is still in prison? There are stories that they've done away with him. Is he really in prison? The matter don't die. Some people even say he passed on in prison. How convenient. What about Evans? Where is Evans? Evans has vanished. Someone said, I hear about Clifford Oji for African China song. Yeah. So, in a country where we need to trust our judicial system, we need to trust our law enforcement more, I understand the need to carry the public along. So, I'm not going to fault the police on this because you get the way they will carry the team, then five years later they will say they judge the matter like this. All of them will come, come and say, yeah, ah, no, 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 these people have played foul play. So I understand the need to bring this to the light, bring this to the fore. However, we need to be careful not to subjudice a case. And especially when the case already done, they get twists and turns. Today, she did it. Tomorrow, she undid it. This girl sat down in an interview and beg for forgiveness and said it was her first time then all of a sudden in another version 
She got to the room and saw him already gone. By the way, guys, um, Taste Buds analyzed this issue in a video. You could, you could just check it up here if you're on YouTube. Just follow my finger. Um, she discussed this. Uh, she, she, she broke it down both uh, in their two different videos. So um, check this one also. She talked about side chicks. She talked about mothers raising their daughters uh, better and, and, and all that. And, and I'd like you guys to actually check this out. Uh, guys, be careful. If you must have side chicks, be careful. I don't advise it. Personally, I don't. It complicates issues. Uh, but I understand that many Nigerian marriages are just show and tell. There's no depth. There's no character. It's just show and tell. You live in a house with a woman. You, you guys don't understand each other. You don't enjoy each other. You're just there together. And at the end of the day, you, you, you catch most funds outside. It has its advantages and it has a lot of disadvantages too. All of a sudden, Chinima that was sober, looking down, now has her hair nicely done, nicely combed, sitting down. She's had a bath, she's looking good, then she has a twist. What exactly is going on? In all, I, 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 I pray that her... I pray that she is given uh, a fair trial. Every human being deserves a fair trial. And every human being is innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around. Uh, so I do hope her rights are preserved and she is not being taken advantage of. That to me is really, really important. However, I also pray that the family of the late uh, Ataga get justice. You don't lose a breadwinner, CEO. CEO no be being so. You don't just lose a breadwinner like that and then not expect to have questions answered. And right now, we're not getting answers. We're getting more questions. Even when they attempt to answer, they answer with more questions. Here's the thing. In all of this, do I believe she did it? I don't know what to believe anymore. The matter get killed. The story tire me. One lesson we all should learn from this is if your marriage isn't working, end it. Agree to disagree. It's not the end of the world. You can still be great parents. Now, there are two things. A man doesn't give a woman a divorce. I'm just saying, I'm not saying it happened in this scenario. I'm just saying, big, a man doesn't want to release a woman. So he makes sure he starves her financially so she can't go. It never ends well. Or... A woman doesn't want to release a man. You're not going anywhere. You're my husband. You're not going anywhere. And then the man has side chicks and all that. I'm not saying this is what happened in this scenario. I'm just warning you guys of the dangers of staying in dead marriages. You think you're doing it for the kids. You think you're doing it for society. You're actually doing yourself a demerit. Women, when a man breaks up with you, understand that he's going to move on with his life. Don't expect him to continue maintaining you on the level you were before. It's your right to expect it. Listen, but it's not wise. Just so that you will not get his money. There's nothing the man will not do to slander your image. So you will not be entitled to that money. So you all need to be careful. I've seen women break up with men and upgrade the children's school. Did you discuss with him? Do you know if it can fit into his pocket? 
Abroad, listen, when a man breaks up with you, you get the house. It's good and it is bad. Men run away. Some men will never marry you. So, in order to avoid potentially disastrous situations, people adapt tactically. And we need to be careful with these scenarios. When you are breaking up with a guy, don't think you can finish. You, will also, you see, the problem is, at the end of the day, you will both lose. He will throw some mud, you will throw some mud. He will sling some mud, you will sling some mud. Before you know it, the two of you will be dirty. The best thing to do is agree to disagree. Be reasonable in your terms. Understand that that person that is leaving you is going to go and remarry. The Bible does not tell anybody not to remarry. There are conditions for a divorce and trust me, you'll be amazed that 90 to 95 percent of Nigerian marriages heading for divorce meet the Bible criteria of immorality. They meet it. They just don't want to agree. Is that the man or the woman? One of them is being... Listen, the moment the marriage is strained, the, the, the likelihood for any of the members of that union to stray is very large. The moment there is a strain in the marriage... Li listen, people fall into the arms of other people who comfort them. And from comforting, hey, by leg, by leg, by leg, you don't know, before you know it, one will climb the other. You need to be careful with that narrative. Many of us just think that, eh, hey, the marriage is over, finish, blah, 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 and hey, she cannot remarry. You have to understand that this woman that is leaving my house is, go, is like me meeting my ex with a man. I go greet the two of them. She don't come up for my life. And she can never come back. I'm sure she also shares it. I'm not saying this as I'm better than how we have our own issues. Though. But I'm sure she's also somewhere saying the same thing that she can never come back to me. And I respect that. So if I can't go back to her and she can't come back to me, do I expect her to be lonely till she dies? Do I expect this rainy weather that is that we're having in Lagos or wherever is in the world is snowing, I expect her to be to sit by herself and, and be praying and fasting and speaking in tongues? One man will be there comforting her or one woman, depending on her preference. In my house, I'd have an issue with it. If we were together, I'd have an issue. But the moment, not the moment we're divorced, though, don't get it twisted though. Listen here, like I say, there's wisdom, there's knowledge, and there's common sense. The moment she moved out of my house, from that day onward, three weeks later, if I saw her with a man, it was no longer my business. It, is, it was no longer my... The moment she left my house, one week, two weeks, three weeks, we've not reconciled, there's no hope of reconciliation, I should not be surprised... If I see her being dropped off from a hotel or from a man's house, it is over. Deal with it. Learn. Nigerians don't know how to move on. Now, there are situations when somebody is, wants to leave the marriage and the other person doesn't want to leave and they're begging and they're... But you see, there are some situations that are clearly cut. Especially when someone clearly tells you, I don't want to do again. I need us to have this conversation. Many people don't move on from the state of their divorce. Simply because they cannot believe that the person is going to move on with somebody else. And then you end up frustrating the person. You end up frustrating the children. Let me tell you, today's children don't care Today's children, let me tell you, in your children's class, 30% of them have stepdaddy and stepmommy. It's not new. It's not like those days. So you'll be amazed that the children will be the first to adapt. Unless they had a really strong family bond. And let me tell you, most marriages that lead to divorce don't really have that strong family bond. The children are not stupid. They already see a gap between daddy and mommy. Daddy and mommy are sharing different rooms. Daddy and mommy don't go out together. Daddy and mommy don't hug. Daddy and mommy don't kiss. You think they are mad? They are the couples where they, they fight openly. The children know. 
when they break up, it's actually a relief to the children. Then there are the couples, I call them the loveless couples. They go to church together, but there's no love. The loveless couples are as dangerous. The children can tell that there's no love in this union. So you think that eh, the divorce is going to affect the children. It's only going to affect the children if the parents are stupid. If the parents are wise, they should learn to divorce themselves without divorcing them, the, 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 themselves from the children. Divorce yourself from your partner. Understand that you and your partner have these children. You guys are no longer together. And you should not expect your partner to join you in together things. It's only abroad that me and you are divorcing there, but we'll go for a, for lunch break with the children. That's nonsense. What are we doing lunch break for? We can be civil, but we don't need to do lunch break together. Sometimes you need to set your boundaries. Sometimes, some people don't live your life simply because they want to taunt the new person you're with. Imagine going for dinner one day and then your new wife or your new husband or your new girlfriend or your new fiancé or your new boyfriend walks in. And at that time, let me tell you, people are very scheming and calculated. At that time, your ex that is there seeing it just drops a one-liner. That will now start affecting the person that you are currently with. Listen, don't let your past ruin your future. Your past is your past. Me and you are exes. We see, we greet. After a while, there's a possibility of evolving a friendship and a relationship. The days you are supposed to pick the children, you can call your ex up and say, look, I'm not going to be around. Can you have the children this week? I'll make it up to you. Okay, no problem. But you're going to make it up to me. And I advise exes, be friends with the current person in your ex's life. Not necessarily friends. Be cordial. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? Understand that you have moved on. It is not war. Be cordial. Let things go on. You see, some men, especially in Nigeria, don't understand that marriage the end. They believe that this woman has married till the day they put her under the ground. Now me get them now my property. That mentality will lead you into much sorrow, sadness, discomfort. You will spend the rest of your days running from pillar to post without even having time to smell the flowers. Because all you are going to do is try to bring the other person down. And let me tell you, for you to stab somebody in the back, you have to be behind that person. You can't front stab the person. So you'll be behind the person all the days of your life. You will restrict your own progress. You will restrict your mental, physical, psychological growth simply because you want to drag somebody down. Learn also to let things go. If a woman breaks up with you, don't go and collect her car. A woman will born for you. A woman will born. I did not do it to my ex. There is nothing that... When my ex came one day and said she wants to pack her things, the only thing I requested was come with a family member so you not carry my thing as your thing. Anything in this house that you believe is yours, take it. I never took away her car. I bought the car. Why should I take away her car? What is she going to be driving? Of course I'm not going to buy her a new car. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a joke. But the car that she was driving, even if I bought it for her, let her go with it. Because we are breaking up with someone does not mean they should be entering bus. At least until they pick up the pieces of their lives, let them go with it. What is car? If you have more than one house, give them a house. The house is not going to get lost. You can put a clause there and say you cannot sell this house. But even if they want to rent it out, and use the money to pay for a smaller apartment or do something or, or allow them the house is not lost now your picking will still get them to me with a fear saying eh, especially people that come from useless families i call these families useless families that have no hope in life except one person 
So all your brothers and sisters get eye for your property. Those families are dangerous. They will be giving you bad advice. Your, your ex-wife is leaving. Leave house. Or leave. Okay, she wants land. Okay, she, leave it. Unless you are a pauper. Let me tell you. I'm talking to men now. Now wisdom, they take the do husband. Sorry. Now wisdom, they take the do boyfriend. Now wisdom, they take the do fiancé. Now wisdom, they take the do husband. And now wisdom, they take the do ex. You can be any of these things with your respect intact. Any of these things with your respect intact. I was watching this Tanzanian babe. What's her name? That was dating Diamond Platinums. She's very popular on IG. The girl broke up with the ex. The ex died. She remarried. While the ex was alive, she remarried. Then the ex died. This woman, on the anniversary of his death, every day they go, go take picture with him, with him grave. Obviously, you know that they didn't walk out for one reason or the other. But she respected him. In death, she still used to go to his grave and take pictures. And I'm like, whatever this man did while he was alive, he earned this woman's respect and loyalty, despite the fact that they broke up. The fact that you are breaking up with somebody does not mean that you have to lose their loyalty. When you are chasing petty, petty things, you will lose loyalty. And this is for men. You will lose, especially rich men. A poor man, I understand, you are poor, so you are struggling to, to hold on to everything you have. But once you are not even wealthy, once you are okay, it gets what they know they struggle for. Let me tell you something. The easiest thing, I'll use my case as an example. Property, what, property was settled in 10 minutes. We fought more over children, over this. Uh, property was settled in 10 minutes. My ex said, this is her thing. I said, yes, leave her. I said, this is my thing. Even though there were some things I had that she had signatory to, okay, she, it was settled in 10 minutes, max. Max. Zari, the boss lady, that's the lady. Finish. Stop dragging property with women. Stop it. It's shameful. It is shameful. Some men will tell you that whatever you have, as long as you had it while you were married to them, it belongs to them. You are a, you are a disgrace. You are a, you are you. They're supposed to flog you for stadium. Shame on you. I like nitty joke, honey. So a woman leaves you, she must now become broke. That's not a man. That's a wimp. A real man doesn't care. I'm sure my ex is doing better than she was when she was with me. That's my prayer for her. She should do better. I don't pray that she should be poorer. I don't pray that she should. No, my issues with her are separate. Does not mean that I, I pray for her to suffer and for her to eat from the gutter so that I will now look like the good one. No, if I want to look like the good one, it's through other ways. Learn it. The mistakes I also made because I was much younger when I went through my divorce. And so I'm giving you people advice. You're going through a divorce. No, 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 no. There's a difference between any your respect and being exploitative. You have a house in Manan Island and you have another house in Lekki, but your wife wants to take the house in Manan Island. Oh, Lenier, you are a thief. How can you take a man's house in Manan Island? Why not go for the lesser one? Eh, we built the house here. Shut up. Unless the two of you ran the company together. If your job was providing him, warming his bed at night and feeding him, oh yes, a reasonable man should give you a house. If, even if he decides that, you know what, I'm not going to give you any of my houses, but I'm going to rent you a place. It's okay. Don't go for that is Banana Island house. Hey, that's the one that you are entitled. Hey, you are a thief. That's for the women. You are a thief. Unless you build the house together with him. 
learn also to draw the line. We're going to have a lot. You see, I'm going to do a whole series on divorce. A whole series on how to divorce properly. Let's forget about marriage. Let's attack the issue. So God bless you guys. Take good care of yourselves. All of you be really serious. The fact that you broke up with someone doesn't make that person a devil. It might be the devil to you, but it's not the devil to the children, not the devil to the new person they're moving on with. And you men, they use sense, cover your shame. They use wisdom, cover your shame. They drag property with woman. Shame on you. Take care of the rest of you. God bless you all.